In this video, you're going to learn how to work with rational exponents. Rational exponents are like fractional exponents, and we're going to talk about how to rewrite them in the radical form and evaluate, and then we're also going to talk about how to work with the radical form, putting it back into the rational exponent form. We're going to go through 12 examples together. Let's dive into the first few examples here. So if we have this 8 raised to the 2 thirds power, what you want to remember is that the numerator is the power, and the denominator is the root, or the index. So you can look over here at this formula, this m, you can either raise it to the mth power here, and the nth root, but the order, it's up to you. So whether you wanna take the nth root uh, first and then raise it to the mth power, or raise it to the mth power first and then take the nth root, either way you're gonna get the same answer. So I'll show you what I mean in this example. So with this eight to the two thirds, I could think of this as the cube root of eight squared, or I could think of this as eight squared, do that first and then take the cube root. So let's do it both ways. So the cube root of eight is really asking us what number, if I have three of them multiplied together, I'll get eight. Well, that's gonna be two because two times two times two is eight. So if this is two, what's two squared? Well, that's gonna be four. Okay, now over here, eight squared is eight times eight, that's eight twice, 64. What's the cube root of 64, meaning what number times itself? Okay, you've got three of them together, equal 64, that's also gonna be four. So either way, now my preference is to take the root first, okay, because that's gonna make the number smaller. Then you can take that smaller number and raise it to the power, which is gonna make it larger. And that tends to make it a little bit more manageable. Otherwise, sometimes when you raise it to the power first, you get such a large number, then it's then difficult to take the root because trying to figure out one number times itself that many times to get that large number can be quite challenging. So let's look at another example. For number two, we've got 16 to the 3 fourths. Okay, so I know that the denominator is like our index or our root, okay? So this is saying, what's the fourth root of 16? Once we figure that out, we're gonna raise that to the third power. So just ask yourself, what number, okay, times itself, like four times, there's four of that number, multiplied together gives us 16. Well, that's gonna be two, so this is gonna be two to the third power, okay, which is two times two times two, and that's gonna give us eight. So pretty easy if you take the root first and the power second. Just remember, it's the denominator that is the root, okay? So for this one, number three, what would you do for this one? This is saying, what's the square root of 81 raised to the third power? So what number times itself, like twice, okay, equals 81? Well, that's gonna be nine. Okay, so then what's nine to the third power? Well, that's nine times nine times nine, which equals 729. Now, some of these numbers are kind of large, but as you work with exponents more and more, you'll start to memorize some of the uh, larger powers, okay, so some of the larger ones. And it's good to know up to a certain point, just so you can do these calculations quickly. Okay, for number four now, what would you do on this one? 27 to the one-third power. Well, again, remember that denominator is the index or the root, so that's saying what's the cube root of 27, then we can raise it to the first power. Of course, anything to the first power is itself. So this is really just saying, what's the cube root of 27? So if we have that same number three times, multiply together to get 27, what would that number be? That's just gonna be three. Okay, and for number five over here, we've got 125 to the negative two-thirds power. Now, what happens when you have a negative exponent? Some students mistakenly think, oh, it's negative, so doesn't that mean that the answer is gonna be negative? Not necessarily, okay, this is a positive number. This negative exponent is really just telling us to take the reciprocal. Now, you can do this in any order. Just like I showed you here, like you can take the root first and then the power second, or the power first and the root second. Same thing here, you could do this negative at the very end, and I'm just gonna show you how that works. So, if I think about this as the cube root of 125, okay, raised to the negative two power. So, cube root of 125, what number three times multiply together is 125, that's gonna be five, because five times five is 25, 25 times five is 125, so this is five. Now five squared, we know that's five twice, like five times five, that's 25, 
But then this negative, what the negative tells us to do is to take the reciprocal or flip it or move it to the other side of the fraction. So this is going to be 1 over 25. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let me show you some more examples. Okay, let's take a look at number six. If you're getting the hang of this, try some of these problems on your own. Just pause the video and try it and then we'll go through it. So for number six, we have 32 to the two-fifths. Okay, so how do we do that one? Well, the denominator is the root or the index. So it's saying, what's the fifth root of 32? Then we're going to raise it to the second power. Okay, so can we think of a number, like if I multiply five of that number together, I get 32. Well, let's see, that's going to be 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. So that's five twos multiplied together. So this is equal to 2 squared. Of course, 2 squared just means 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Now the mistake that I don't want you to make that some students do is like this. They'll say, okay, um, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 16 is 256. See, that's not actually what we're doing here. We're saying what number, that same number, five times. So it's like two times two is four. Then you take the four times two is eight. Then eight times two is 16. Then 16 times two is 32. You don't want to do what I just showed you where you're like four times four is 16, 16 times 16. No, you just want to say what number that five times. Okay, so for number seven now, how would you do this one? You've got negative 25 to the three halves power. Now notice it's not the exponent that's negative, it's this number that's negative, the base. So when we look at this, we can think of this as the 2 represents the square root of negative 25, and then remember the numerator is the power. What number times itself is negative 25? Well, 5 times 5 is positive 25, a negative 5 times a negative 5 is also positive 25. So we really can't take the square root of negative 25 without getting imaginary numbers. So for this one, we're just going to say there's no real uh, solution, okay? It's not going to be a real number. Okay, for number 8 now, what do you think on this one? We've got 49 to the negative 3 halves power. How would you do that one? Okay, remember, denominator is the root, so that's really saying the square root. And by the way, you know, normally when we see a radical like this, we don't see a number here that's understood to be a 2, right? That's the square root. But you can write it here just to remind yourself, okay? And then we're going to raise this to the negative third power. Now, one way to do this is just to take the reciprocal right at the beginning and say this is 1 over 49 to the 3 halves, okay? And then you can say, all right, this is the square root of 49 cubed, right? So the denominator is the the root or the index, and then the numerator is the power. We just took the reciprocal or moved it to the denominator. And then what number times itself is 49? Well, that's 7. 7 times 7 is 49. What's 7 cubed? That's 343. So this is 1 over 343. Okay, for number 9, see if you can do this one. What's negative 512 to the 5 ninths power? Okay, now you might be saying, Mara, this is really big. I don't know what to do. So I want to show you a little trick or technique. You can take these numbers and you can do a prime factorization tree on them. Just ignore the negative for a moment. Let's just break this number down. If it's even, you can always cut it in half, right? So that's going to be 2 times 256. This is even. We can cut that in half. That's 2 times 128. This is even. 2 times 64. Now we're down to numbers we're more familiar with. We can say this is uh, 8 times 8. 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. Now, if we just look at the ends of the branches, okay, ignoring these numbers here, okay, the numbers that are left there at the very ends, we're looking for 9 of the same number, okay, because we're saying what number times itself 9 times is 512. <clears throat> well, if you notice, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 twos, with nothing left over. So 512 is really like 2 to the 9th power. Well, the ninth root of 2 to the 9th, those are inverses or opposites. So you're just going to get 2. But notice when you take the odd root of a negative number, okay, so this is the ninth root of negative 512, basically meaning what number, okay, 9 times, okay, if you were to give us a negative 512, well, if we have an odd number of negatives, 
we're going to get a negative. If we have an even number of negatives, we're going to get a positive. So in this case, this is actually going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, 9 negative 2s. So this is negative 2 now raised to the fifth power. So negative 2 to the fifth power, that's negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4, times another negative 2 is negative 8, times another negative 2 is positive 16, times another negative 2 is negative 32. So one thing to watch out for is that you can take the odd root of a negative number. You just can't take the even root of a negative number. That's going to give us imaginary numbers, or it's going to give us a situation like this where there's no real solution. So just be careful for that. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do a few more examples. Okay, we've already seen how to go from the rational exponent form or the fractional exponent to the radical form. Now we're going to take it the other direction from the radical form back to the rational exponent form. So it's good to know how to switch back and forth. See if you can try these three on your own, okay, using these formulas here. And while you do that, if you're thinking to yourself, man, Mario, I wish you were my math teacher. Why can't you just come into my school and teach me this, right? Well, on my Mars Math Tutor YouTube channel now, there's a channel membership that you can join. And if you join at the additional videos level, you can have access to my math courses. So I take you step by step through a typical Algebra 1 course or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra math course or a Geometry, my full course is on there, or my Pre-Calculus course. So if you want to be efficient and kind of go through those courses in a way that they would normally be taught by me, Check that out. It also has midterm and final exam reviews on there, as well as ACT and SAT prep videos on there, and more. So there's almost 400 videos on that membership section at the additional videos level. The supporter, I appreciate, but to get access to the additional videos, join at that additional videos level. So let's dive into these last three, and then we'll wrap up. So we look at number 10 here now. How do I go to the rational exponent form? Well, my base is going to be 4. And I know that my index or my root is going to be the denominator. My power here is going to be the numerator. So this is just going to be 4 to the 7 thirds power. And you got it. Okay, for number 11 now, we've got the square root of 5 to the third power. So we can see that our base here is going to be 5. But notice there's not an index here. This is understood to be a 2, remember? So this is really going to be the square root. That index or that root goes in the denominator the power goes in the numerator. So this is 5 to the 3 halves power. And then for number 12, this one's interesting because, see, it's in the denominator. Okay, so we've taken the reciprocal. That means this is going to have a negative exponent. Our base is going to be 20, so it's going to be 20. The root, remember, goes in the denominator. The power goes in the numerator. Remember, it doesn't matter. You can take the power first and the root second or vice versa, okay? Uh, but that, that power is always going to go in the top, the root's going to go in the bottom, and because we took the reciprocal, this is actually going to be a negative exponent, okay? And you got it. So, great job if you're able to follow these examples. If you want more practice, which I definitely recommend, I'll direct you to another video I did talking about the same topic if you want to pause and practice and, and check your work with that video to get some additional uh, experience. I'll see you over in that video.